Alex, firstly, I must ask about your family. Are they okay? Are they are they safe? Have you had contact with them? Yeah, thanks God. Uh, most of them in the safe places, but still, you know, um, you never know what can happen. So I pray every single day, and my phone always in my hand, so I will keep in touch with them. It, it must be incredibly difficult going through what you're going through at the moment, uh, and also to be distanced from them as well. It's so tough, so tough. Uh, it's not just worse, but I'll be honest, if not my daughter, not my family, I would be there. Hmm. I would be there because it's, it's part of you feel like you should be there. Yes, exactly. I don't know. I, 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 I just, I'm just born like that. I was growing up like that. I know the people from my country, the mentality of them, and all of them, they, they think exactly the same like I am. Where were you when you first heard the news that they'd invaded? That was a midnight by UK time, I guess 3 a.m. My wife woke me up and uh, she was crying. She was crying. I was like, I was in shock. She showed me the video videos, the pictures, what's going on now in Ukraine. And that feeling, um, I cannot even explain you because I never felt myself in that position. When you see the images of the destruction of, of the cities in Ukraine at the moment, what goes through your mind? I'm just crying. I promise you, I'm just crying. It's already a week, like, I, I'm not counting, but even I can drive my, I can drive the car from the training ground or it doesn't matter where, I'm, I can just cry from nothing because it, it, it's everything in my head. Imagine the place where you was born when you was growing up and there is just empty ground. Mm -hmm. I it's, can't. It's very it's, difficult it, to imagine, it, but it's actually happening to you and your family, your people. I cannot imagine the people which is over there at the moment and they are surviving. I, I cannot imagine the feelings from them, mm. honestly. Because I know a lot of things which probably don't know the rest of the world. Because I can, I, I have a lot of friends there and a lot of people from different cities. And they're sending me the facts. The people starving there. The people sleeping on, on, on underground in bunkers, wherever, they cannot live proper life. Does it also make you feel proud of your people, the way they've stood up? I'm so proud to be Ukrainian, and I will be forever, for the rest of my life. And um, when you're watching the people, how they fight for their lives, there is no words, you know. So, I know the people, the mentality of my people from my country. They prefer to die, and they will die, but they're not going to give nothing. What do you say to Russia when they say this is just a security operation? I can show you one million pictures. I can show you one million videos, what they're doing now. I can show you the all, every city in my country which which they destroyed and this is a uh, secret operation it's impossible this is the real war would you like to hear perhaps from some russian footballers would you like to see what they think about this invasion i was surprised that no one no one from them from all of them most of them playing the national team and they have a lot of followers in Instagram, Facebook, wherever. At least they can say their positions, but they don't, they just ignore it. I don't know why. Some people will say, why are footballers speaking out? Why don't you just stick to football? What would your answer be to that? I play for Manchester City. I have one and a half million followers in Instagram, and my mission is to show the, 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 the rest of the world the real truth. What's going wrong now in Ukraine? How have your, your teammates and, and the coaches and managers been towards you during this time? I'm so lucky to be part of this amazing club. You know, the way how support they, they support me, all of them, teammates, coaching staff, all of them. Even, even apart from the club, you know, the people here in the UK, when I'm just walking somewhere on the street, the little guys, which is maybe 10 years old from the school, they come to me and they say, we pray for your country. My tears is coming from my eyes straight away. So everyone feels in Ukraine that 
all the world standing with us. We've seen Ukrainian flags at many football games. I've been to two this week, two FA Cup ties, where Ukrainian flags were everywhere. Does that support help at all in, in, in some ways? Definitely, definitely. I'm getting a lot of messages from a lot of guys in Ukraine, and they're asking me about some videos of support and stuff. So people are watching TV as well. The people are still watching football, and they can see all these things. And I guess it helps a lot for them, you know, like the people who are supporting Ukraine, they're trying to push them, don't give up. Mm. And I know my people, they won't. There are a lot of you know, BBC journalists, other media outlets, of course, on the ground in Ukraine reporting it, as it actually does happen factually. How important is that? I'm so grateful for, to, to them as well for everything what they are doing at the moment because they are taking the risk of their lives yeah. and they just want to show to the, to the rest of the world the real truth. Yeah, I would love to say thanks a lot for, for that and my, my prayers with them. Ukraine have, have been asking for protection from the skies. They've not got that yet and, and obviously there's, there's concern about nuclear escalation. Um, do you think that will come? I hope so, because there is a massive risk uh, that Russia is going to take what they want to take. But then the question is, which country will be tomorrow? So we need, we need to stop the war. We need to close the space in the air, because the main damage we're getting from there. And uh, people should understand that everyone is in a big risk. Finally, Alex, I, uh, would you like to give a message to people? Like I said already, I'm so grateful for all the support that we are getting and my country getting around the world. If you can donate something, a Red Cross, I would be really appreciated. But if, if not, it's the same. Your support is, means a lot for us. Any little message, you know, like the people are doing now, the protests around the world, it can help. Is that, why you, is that why you wanted to do this interview? Exactly. So I, I was thinking, to, uh, uh, you know, a few days about this interview. Should I do? Should I? Should I not? But I just want to send a message to, to to all the people that please don't ignore this. We need to stop the war. I understand you. You just like to say a few words in Ukrainian as well. There was already a lot, but I'm gonna say just one thing is Slava Ukraine. Glory to Ukraine. Alex, thank you so much and I hope everything turns out as well as it possibly can. Thanks a lot to you that you came and for this opportunity to talk to you.